practical ways to maintaining sexual purity. The truth is that sexual purity is a struggle, it is a fight, it is a journey, it is a work that we all get to work with the help of God. And if you are a Christian that really wants to work this work and be successful in it, I believe that these steps is going to help you. Now, these are things that I've applied to my life in working this work as a single Christian man and God has been there to help me with it because I can't do without God in working this work. Now, the first ABC to these steps are, the A part of it is accountability. The question is, who are you accountable to? First of all, you should know that the fact that you are practicing sexual purity is to honor God. So if you are honoring God with this, you are accountable to God. I want to make God proud. It's not in a religious sense of saying, God, I will keep my body, I will be sexually pure so that you will do this and that for me so that you give me a good husband. Now, I made that mistake in starting and trying this work out. I started telling God, now that I am keeping myself, maybe I will get a reward of a good wife. And then God rebuked me in a very holy way. But I felt that rebuke because when I read scripture, it said that a good and prudent wife is a gift from the Lord. And I realized that from my mindset, I was trying to get a reward from God for staying sexually pure, for not having sex with anybody, for honoring my body. And God says, no, you are doing this for your good. You are doing this to honor me. You are doing this because you are loyal to me. So the fact that you are looking for a good wife, it is a gift from me like God speaking, and then it kind of made me realize that if I want to give a gift to someone, I will give them a gift hoping that they would value my gift. So then if the Bible says that a prudent wife is a gift from the Lord, I believe that God would like to give this valuable gift to someone who would value that gift, not to someone who maybe when you turn back and look at them, they are rubbishing the gift and doing whatever. And if you are staying on the path of sexual purity, just know that there is a blessing attached to it. So a good wife will be part of it if you do the work to get a good wife actually. But then do not do it with the transactional mindset of saying, I'm doing this so that I would get a good wife. First of all, you are accountable to God and you are accountable to yourself. And I do suggest you should have someone in your life that you can be accountable to. Someone you trust, a friend that you can work with and you can share your heart, share your struggles, share the temptations you are having and let them hold you accountable. But in Joseph's case, we realize that Joseph only had himself and God to be accountable to, which he answered his master's wife who was lusting after him and trying to get him on bed with her. Joseph replied her, how could I do such a wicked thing? It would be a great sin against God. And then the first part where he said, I could I do such a wicked thing? That was an accountability to himself. If I do this, it shows I'm a wicked person. I know that it's very easy to say I am a single person and the person that I want to sleep with is single and then there is consent in it. So I'm not doing wickedness to them. But in God's high, that is wickedness. Because you are trying to reap the benefit and fruit of intimacy without paying the price of it. You are trying to get intimate and enjoy this without the price of commitment. You're not committed and then it's going to lead to other things. It's going to lead to heartbreak and it's going to lead to what I hate, like opening the Pandora's box whereby your insecurity jumps out of the box. It's going to lead to a lot of things you do not bargain for. And the truth is that the other part of your accountability is to God because scripture says, how could I do this great sin against God? God is the one I'm honoring. So if I get to break this, I am actually not being accountable to God. So whenever you are tempted, whenever you feel the urge, this always has to be at the top of your mind whenever you are in a situation that tries to drag you away to start considering breaking your sexual purity. Let yourself know, I am accountable to me. I am accountable to God. This mindset is what kept Joseph. Then number two, boundaries. Boundaries. Boundaries is very important. The truth is that if you don't have boundaries in your life, then you can do whatever. So when you're saying, I am keeping sexual purity, you have to keep boundaries in your life with how you relate with the opposite sex. Now I'm talking about temptation to fornication. And if you are attracted to, you know, someone else, the same gender, which is 
actually against the scriptural principle. You have to keep yourself in a place that you allow God to help you, whereby you put boundaries in wherever you feel attracted and you are lost in. Now, when I talk about boundaries, you put boundaries when you feel attracted to someone, you have to put a boundary and then don't stay in that place ruminating. I talked about attraction not being a sin in a video and then lost is the problem. Attraction is not a problem. But when you feel attracted to someone, you have to be careful how you trade so that you will not put yourself in a situation whereby your attraction will transform into lust and then will get you into a place of temptation that you cannot avoid. Now, in the story of Joseph, Joseph realized that the master's wife was unto him. And what did he do? If you read down in that Genesis 39, scripture says, Joseph started avoiding her. She kept putting pressure on Joseph day after day, but he refused to sleep with her. And he kept out of her way as much as possible. Now, Joseph knew the art of having to put boundaries between himself and this woman. He is attracted to this woman, and I always do say that to my friends. If Joseph was not attracted to the woman, it wouldn't be any problem because he could easily just avoid the whole thing and stay there, nothing was going to happen. But he was attracted, and he knows that anything can go wrong. And even to the point that when the woman was trying to force herself on him, he had to tear off his clothes and run. In your life, maybe you are in a relationship, you have to put in the boundary when you get in the relationship, no strings pulled. Say it at the first date, say it once you get into the relationship and let your thoughts be known, let your principles be known so that before you even go ahead to get things going deeper, you've already declared that. Because when we talk about keeping or maintaining sexual purity, it's quite easy if you're not in a relationship. You will not really have much of a problem with that as a Christian because already you don't have any uh, like situation that presents you in a place where that, whereby the temptation can overcome you. When you are in a, an intimate relationship dating someone and you love that person and that person is attractive to you, you have to put boundaries and then always be reminded of your accountability as much as you put boundaries and then you guys have to hold that boundary strong. The other part about boundaries that I want to talk about is your ear gate and your eye gate. You have to guard your heart so that whatever you hear and whatever comes through your eyes will be guarded because those are places that you have to put boundaries also. Scripture says guard your heart with all due diligence because all the issues of life comes out from this. If you keep feeding yourself with romantic novels, romantic movies, and all of that, and you want to maintain sexual purity, well, you are opening yourself up to be aroused. And scripture says, do not awaken love before its time. So you can keep feeding on things that would arouse you and make you want this as much as possible. I'm not saying don't watch plus 18, plus 16 movies and all of that. But whatever you watch, you have to be careful with what comes through your ear gates and your eye gates. What you are feeding yourself with is much important because those are what will open up the channels of your heart to start wanting this thing, especially if you are in a relationship. If you keep opening yourself there and you have someone you love and you are attracted to, maintaining sexual purity will become tougher. It makes the journey tougher because right now, your body knows what it wants and it recognizes that it loves someone and you're in a space with that person. So now the temptation becomes deeper. Third point, your circle or your community, which is this I'm talking about friendships. The kind of friends you keep is very important. The people in your circle is very important. You don't want to stay around people who are not like-minded. How can two work together if they do not agree? You want to be sexually pure how do you work with people who are sleeping around? I know you can say nothing will happen. They cannot change me, but there are influences they are, they are having on your mindset. There are things that they are opening you up to, opportunities for temptation. And you don't want to be in that area. Now, scripture has made us know that bad company corrupts good manners. You cannot be around a bad company and expect not to be infected by whatever is happening there. It's just like going to a place whereby firewood is burning. You can't expect to leave that place without smelling like that firewood. So it may necessarily be that you don't become like your friends. 
but if they are the ones in your inner circle, it makes your work harder. And I would even dare to say that it can even come to a place of making you become like them, making you want to change your mindset about what you believe and your principle about sexual purity, like what is in it. You can just have this sex. I love this person. We're in a relationship. Oh, we're going to marry each other. Let's just get ahead and have the sex and then you get married somehow and what happens for you to just wait it out you know put the ring on it go stay committed and then you can have your sex like poor advice i know that in some cultures like the culture i'm in sometimes financial struggle and financial concerns is one of the reasons that people cannot go ahead and just get married because they want to get married they are passionate they love someone but the financial capability is not there so now you still have to embrace this sexual purity and ask God to help you and open doors and get to work so that you can get to do the right thing and marry this person you so love. Paul advised in First Corinthians, if you know you cannot wait, go and marry your fiancé, the person you want to marry. So just get married with the person instead of saying, I'm just going to, you know, let me try, let me test. Because community is important. Your circle is important. If you are in a circle of people, that want to walk this walk with you, you feel different because you are talking about things that are helpful for you to walk the journey. Scriptures in 2 Timothy 2.22 said, Run from anything that stimulates youthful lust. Instead, pursue righteous living, faithfulness, love and peace. Enjoy the companionship of those who call on the Lord with pure hearts. So your circle should be community of people who call on God with pure heart, who walk righteously, in love and unity, who are on the same path as you are walking. Yeah, you might say, I've not seen those kind of people, but they exist. You will find them, pray to God to help you find them, so that you can walk this walk with them. Because it's not a walk you can just walk alone. There are some things you need to share with someone, and they will confirm that they feel the same way, and it makes you feel normal. If you have bad community around you, no disrespect, but you have to space yourself from them, because they are not helping you, work the work you want to work now the next point is communication if you are in a relationship this is very very important an open honest and transparent communication is very important which you can be vulnerable with the person and let them know this is the reason that i don't want to have sex in this relationship because if you're in a relationship it presents you with a different kind of temptation at this point this temptation is really real because you love this person and when you lo once you love someone, your whole body opens up to this person that you love and are attracted to. So this is where the communication, the open communication has to be something that you keep reminding yourself. This is why we are waiting. And you're not waiting to waste each other's time. But the way I put it when I talk to my girlfriend is that this is the best way I can honor you. Is to stay away from your body. Is to not have sex with you. I am honoring your body. I respect you. And I want to do right by you. And I believe that it is true. It's what I believe. I'm not just saying it to mesmerize or something. I, I feel the need. I feel like, you know, want, I want this. So the thing about sexual purity is not a question of being anti-sex. Whereby you feel like I don't ever feel the need for this. If you're in a relationship, you're attracted to someone and you've never felt a need for it. Somehow there might be a problem. I'm not, I don't know, but that is just for me. That's not scriptural. Because in my experience, falling in love and having to love someone deeply, I feel it. And I feel the frustration, but I have to communicate and then know that I am being self-controlled. I'm not going to find a way to satisfy myself by masturbation. God saved me from that. I'm not going to watch porn or do anything to satisfy myself. I'm going to be okay. It's natural for me to feel that way. It's natural for me to feel aroused. It's natural for me to feel every feeling that I have because I'm a human being with emotions, with hormones. So something is happening in me biologically and I can't stop it. And I don't have to submit to it either. But I can communicate with my partner, let them know, look, it's not as if I don't want to, you know, enjoy this. But then I have to do it the God way because I am accountable. To God, first of all. Number five is confidence in the flesh. Now, the one thing we have to avoid if you want to maintain sexual purity is having confidence in your flesh, feeling like nothing can ever happen. 
Nah, I can never be tempted. Nah, nothing can move me. Nah, nobody can arouse me. Hmm? Yeah. Don't go to a strip club and sit there trying to, you know, uh, oh, you're pretending you're being self-controlled. You're seeing things and it's moving you. And you're, you're actually learning how to suppress yourself. You can only learn how to, you know, suppress your emotions and everything. But don't go put yourself in a situation whereby you have to suppress your feelings. Whereby you have to suppress how you really feel, your natural being as a human being. Or maybe on an innocent level, you just feel like nothing can happen. No, I know myself. I will never fall a victim to that. What if something happens? What if you allow her come to the house and you guys sleep on the bed together and then she's not as honest as you thought she'd be? And then you guys are not keeping to the rule that you keep. So there are some things when you know the person you're working with that you have to be careful with. And even innocently being with someone you don't know in the same house, you have to be careful and your mind has to be alert towards that, especially for a lady. Because a lot of guys are out there, you tell them, I'm keeping sexual purity, they say, no problem, I'm on the same journey, it's okay, quote unquote, whatever. And then when you get in a relationship with them, before you know, they start leading you to where you said, I'm not going. Because right now they know that your emotions are up, your hormones are up, you are attracted and you want this. And they are like, oh no, before you know, it's easy to fall into it. So I have no confidence in the flesh. And when I say this, it's most applicable in a relationship. I have no confidence in your flesh and nothing is going to happen. Instead, hold each other accountable. Let each other know when you feel like I'm weak, you have to hold me accountable. When I feel like you are weak, I have to hold you accountable if we are working as two that agree in a relationship that we want to honor God. So this means that the presumption to have it all together has to be pushed aside and kept outside. The next point is you have to be obedient to the word of God. Now scriptures in Psalm 119 actually state that and said, how can a young person stay pure by obeying your word? It is only by living in the word of God and walking in its truth that you can stay sexually pure because you have to always keep yourself in remembrance of the word of God. You always have to keep yourself in remembrance of what God said about this. Why are you doing this? Always remind yourself of your why. And I did a video about that, which is, this is a sequel to that video about having a better why for you being sexually pure. So this is not a journey that you just feel like, no, I have it all together. I know what I'm doing. You need the help of God and you need the Holy Spirit to help you with self-control that in the days that you are not in your best you know, mood, in your best form, you have to pray to God, pray to the Holy Spirit, ask for his help, for him to help you. It is a real journey and we have to be honest. You don't have to listen to what the culture is selling. What they are selling is counter scripture. You have to know that. So whatever the culture is trying to sell you about this sexual purity thing, it is not that way that God sees it. So you have to go about this life the God way. Then the next point is you have to learn to be disciplined, to be self-controlled. That you don't have to give in to your desires. You don't have to give in to how you feel, especially if you are in a relationship. You don't have to give in to how you feel. You have to I allow God to help you. The last point I just mentioned is you obeying the word of God because the way for a young person to stay pure is actually to obey the word of God. Now, scriptures, what does scripture say? To help you with self-control, scripture does not say stay there and just observe what is going to happen. Allow her to undress herself. And after she undresses herself, you sit on the couch and cross your legs and say, nah, nothing is going to happen. Just put on your clothes back and all of that. <laughs> What a funny situation that that would be. Is it possible? Not with someone you are attracted to. Not with someone you say you love. Because when you see them undressing, you would, your body, your mind might say, I don't want this. Your body is saying, bring it on. Bring it on. I want this. So the act of self-control is what the Bible teaches you. The best form of self-control is to run. <laughs> run away. And the word the Bible used there is flee which is run away without looking back. Flee sexual immorality. Joseph was caught in the midst of it. And this woman pulls on him and says, sleep with me now. And Joseph had to tear off his clothes and say, no, I had to run. 
to escape, vanish from that situation. In a place of temptation, which you could be tempted as a man, you could be tempted as a woman, run is the word. Run is the next step. For self-control, first of all, run. You are self-controlled inside your house when you are alone. And you don't have to carry your legs and walk to somebody's house or walk to an hotel or walk somewhere to go find a way to satisfy yourself. That is where your self-control works for you. But they're speaking in tongues. You don't walk when you are in a real place of situation whereby you are seeing a real person who is attractive and who is tempting you and seducing you. You can't keep quiet and just say, nothing is going to happen. Mm, bad situation. You just have to obey the word of God. Run. Then the next point is marry. Get married. That is actually from Paul. In 1 Corinthians chapter 7, he said, To maintain sexual purity, my dear, get married. If you know that you cannot wait and your passions are wild and you can't wait for long, find a way, the person you love, get married to this person and then get to have this sex in a committed relationship, that is where it is honored. That is where you honor God, you honor the person, you honor yourself. So get married. But personally, I would not advise people to marry because of sex. Now, that is why I kept this at the last, as the last way to maintain sexual purity. But then I would not advise someone that this is the first step to take. There are steps to take that you can maintain sexual purity even when you are dating someone, even when you are in a relationship. You can learn self-control so that you will not have to get married because you just want to have sex. Because at that point, you might just marry anybody for the purpose of attraction and sex. And forget that in marriage, you need a purpose partner. That you need someone you can walk through life with and talk through things together and then live life together and train your children together and build a legacy together. So there's more to marriage than your passions. So the get married aspect is Paul saying in a righteous way, the best way to have sex is in marriage. So if you feel you cannot wait, just get married. I really do hope that these few points are really helpful and then they are practical enough for you to get something out of this video, something that you will use to apply to your life, to your relationship, and work this work of sexual purity with God, honoring your partner, honoring yourself, and honoring God. And then I would love to see you in my other video. I am Uem Akman. I would like to hear from you in the comment section. What are the steps that you take to observe sexual purity, or what do you do? Thank you. Bye-bye.